Welcome back, I'm Terry, and this is Keep It Simple DIY. We're canning today. I'm happy about these recipes. I am going to be canning some slow roasted Mexican tomato sauce called Salsa Ranchera. And I'm also going to be making some tomatillo salsa or something salsa verde, something with tomatillos. So I have four pounds of tomatoes here. This recipe calls for five pounds, so I'm going to cut the recipe down a little bit in each area. So what we need is tomatoes, jalapenos, onions, garlic, salt, and then we'll need citric acid or lemon juice when we go to bottle these up. So the first step here is that I need to get all of these tomatoes and the jalapenos on a baking sheet and we need to get them baking until I can peel the skins off nicely and that'll be probably like an hour. So that's our first big feat here. So I'm going to get these jalapenos on the sheet because that's easy. I don't know if you can even see the sheet there, but that's an easy thing to do. And then I need to get all of these washed up and then cut. So I am just going to little by little throw them into my colander that's in my sink. And then I do have the onions ready. I won't need those until after these are out. Whoa. I won't need the onions until after the tomatoes are out of the oven. And so I went, oh look, that's not a tomato. <laughs> so I went back and forth on what I wanted to use, what kind of tomatoes for what. So I have Roma tomatoes and cherry tomatoes and I've decided that I'm going to use the cherry tomatoes for the salsa because they're more runny and I like a more runny salsa. And then I also like a less runny sauce, so I'm going to use the Romas for a sauce. I'm going to get them onto the parchment paper and I was rereading the recipe and it said to use plum tomatoes so I just googled what that is because I don't know what a plum tomato is. I need to dry these off. And it said it's like a paste tomato and these are not paste tomatoes so I think we'll be okay but definitely make sure you're always following a tested recipe. I think since I'm still using tomatoes, I mean to me a tomato is a tomato? A tomato is a tomato is what I tried to say. If you know any different, let me know though. Um, the book that I'm using is the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. So hopefully these will be okay since they're not plum tomatoes. And that one looks kind of rotten. So the recipe said, why did it say put that on the back? says arrange tomatoes and jalapeno peppers skin side down on two foiled lined baking sheets. Foil lined. I did parchment paper. I think we'll be okay. Um, bake for about an hour or until tomatoes are mostly dry and their skins peel off. So the skins are down. Should I change that? I'm gonna get foil. I wonder if I'll need two though because I don't have as many tomatoes as they call for. Maybe I'll use one big one. We'll do that one big cookie sheet that's foil line. But since I am cutting the recipe down to like 80%, probably doesn't even. Oh, uh, it's not quite big enough. Okay, I gotta reread that. What way am I supposed to face these? 
skin side down. Now the peppers were already cut the way that they are and that just is what it is. They're from last year's garden. removing the skins I'm like well I mean not skins I didn't see anything about removing the seeds I'll have to reread that when I get there because it just said to place them hmm maybe later the seeds will just come out really easily I mean they'd come out really easily now The last time I made a salsa, I didn't make a roasted salsa. I just made a regular salsa. So that's why I'm a little confused here. I might actually need more than one pan. <laughs> For one hour, these go. We have just about 15 minutes on the timer for the tomatoes. I am going to get the tomatillos ready for the tomatillo salsa. So there is one pepper. I don't think I'm supposed to have diced them, but because they were in my freezer from last year's garden, they're diced. It's fine. I did go out and get some cilantro from the garden. So this says that we need to put the onions and the tomatillos on here and I need to put the tomatillos stem side down and instead of doing like 375 for an hour like I did the tomatoes, these ones need 425 for 15 minutes and then the onions will stay on for a little bit longer. Hmm, so how am I going to do that? Maybe the onions will have to just go on one side. But maybe they won't need extra time because mine are already diced so small. So with this. We'll get everything cooking. We'll get it in the blender. We'll get it on the stove. I gotta remember if that's the right order. Don't worry, I will read the recipe again. I'm using, it's like ballmasonjars.com is where I'm getting this recipe from. So it is a ball recipe. It's just not from one of my books or it might be in one of my books, but I didn't see it. And I'm cutting this recipe in half. So I only have two pounds of tomatillos, which not only, I mean the recipe calls for four, but I have two pounds of tomatillos. Last year I think I got four tomatillos and this year I have two pounds so that's really neat and I want to use them before they start to turn not so good. Whoa. Okay, so it's just waiting and this will go in as soon as we are done with the tomatoes. Alrighty, these tomatoes are done. I need to take them out and let them cool down long enough for me to be able to touch them. I did just preheat the oven to 425 and I'm going to get our tomatillos in for 15 minutes. The tomatillos just came out of the oven and these are now cool enough for me to peel the skins off. So I am going to go through and tediously peel all of these skins off. Okay, I read through my recipe like three more times. I was like, this just doesn't sound right that I'm not taking the seeds out. And it did call for it to be cored and quartered. So I think by being cored, that probably means take the seeds out too would be my guess. So what I'm doing here is I am just turning them over, taking the skin off, letting the seeds come out, and then putting the little piece into the pot. So hopefully I have somewhat <laughs> of a good amount when I'm done. This is going to take forever. <laughs> this is why you want to use big tomatoes, but I didn't have that many big tomatoes to be able to do all the things that I want to do with tomatoes. So maybe next year I will make big tomatoes, not make, grow big tomatoes. I am going to be here for quite a while getting these skins off of these tomatoes. In the meantime, the tomatillos did come out of the oven, so they're sitting there cooling off. It didn't say to cool them off, I don't think, but um, they're going to cool off because I need to do this. And the hope is that I can can them both at the same time. 
So little by little, we will get there. I just realized I had been throwing away the tomato skins and I can use them to make tomato powder. Okay, that took forever. I did put everything in the smaller pot. It called for a large pot, but it also said it would only make four eight ounce pints if you use the whole recipe and I'm making a smaller recipe so I'm expecting to get like two pints but I feel like a smaller pot would do better. So I need to still add the onion. I got most of that in there. Some salt and some garlic. It calls for a clove and a half of garlic based on how I'm cutting the recipe down. And I'm seeing why it said to use plum tomatoes <laughs> because that was a lot of a lot of work. Okay, got those in there. I got my jalapenos de-seeded. Let's add a pinch of salt. And then I need to blend up the tomatillos. Okay. Now we cut this recipe in half and so I need to half all of the ingredients. I am going to put tomatillos tomatillos in first. These are very satisfying to hold on to when they're slightly warm. I think, well, can I get that off? I'm trying to figure out how to pick up those peppers without touching them. I need a clove of garlic. And I did make sure that this garlic is, doesn't have any preservatives in it. So it is just garlic, water, and citric acid. So there's nothing in there that's going to be harmful. I'm going to get these up. Wait, are there any seeds in them? Get all the seeds out. Okay, get the onions in. Then we need about a half a teaspoon of pepper. And I am eyeballing these because the spices do not affect the safety of a recipe. But what I will not be eyeballing is the quarter cup of lime juice. Because the lime juice definitely has to do with the acidity. And we wanna make sure this is the right acidity. Okay, I do not have another little pot, so we will use this big one. Smells good. I need to get both of these on the stove and then we will be canning them shortly. Kidding, I realized I forgot to put the cilantro in there. So I am going to get this blended back up and back on the stove. Alrighty, we are in business. These have been boiling. This one I'm going to actually switch, I think, for which one's in the front and which one's in back. This is too hot to touch. Nope. Because it said to cook that one a little bit longer than it said to cook this one. So, oh, that side was hot. I am going to get this jarred up. So this one has the lime juice in it, so it is already safe. We want to make sure on the other one that we remember to add in the citric acid. So I am filling these jars to a quarter inch headspace. My jars are hot. I filled them with very hot water before I got started. And I took out seven jars, hoping that that will be the amount of jars that I need. Now I don't think that my can or water is quite boiling yet. So I think I'm going to just set these off to the side because I don't want to put them in when they're really hot and the canner is not So we'll just keep filling while we wait for that canner to heat up. I think this is the smallest batch I've ever done. <laughs> well, no, it's not. But it's the smallest batch that I've ever taken a lot of time to do. 
And I've been canning so much that I had to use different towels. So we have pink towels today. Now there is not enough of this to fill another jar, but there is enough of it for me to put in a little container and put in the fridge. Oh wait, can't forget citric acid. We need to debubble these. The other ones I did not debubble because they are just a liquid. Maybe I'll mix some of that citric acid in a little bit while I'm doing it. And this is just some water that I'm dipping in. Now my canner, I did put some vinegar in there. Good. 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 Rewipe all these rims, I guess. Now I normally wouldn't do it like in an assembly line like this, but my water wasn't quite hot. And so I think now is the perfect time to get these in. So I'm going to get these screwed on really tightly and then put them in the water. And I need to make sure I have enough water in there. It has to stay an inch over the entire time. All right, there they are. We're kind of starting to boil. I'm going to let these boil for 35 minutes, then I'll turn off the heat, let them sit for five, and then we'll be taking them out. All righty, it has been five minutes since I turned off the canner. Let's get these jars out. Also, if you are wanting to get started canning and you're not sure what kind of a canner to get, I highly recommend this one. This is the Presto 23 quart and it's a pressure canner, but it also doubled as a really big pot. So you can do water bath canning with it as well. So I definitely like that this is like a multifunctional canner. Alrighty, so as we take the last one of these out, I wanna thank you so much for being here with me as we made these today. And if you haven't yet, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and I will pop two other canning videos up over here for you. Thanks so much for being here. I will see you next time. Bye bye. Love it when they're pinging right out of the jars. I meant out of the canner, you know.